when I came out as a student at Edinburgh University in, in the in the sort of mid to late 1980s. Um, and I think at that time it's fair to say that um, LGBTQI plus people were uh, sort of feared and loathed in equal measure. Um, but being a student in Edinburgh and Manchester is one thing um, and being out because then you know you were kind of like a student you could be quite radical um, but being a postdoc in London uh, was actually very different um, and while being in London opened up more opportunity to, you know, to be oneself because you know London you know was, was quite a gay city you know, and that was absolutely brilliant um, the opposite was true in science so I kind of felt at the time that often I was doing a subject that was more constraining than the, the life I was leading in general. And so the, hence the kind of the, the multiple identities were probably uh, one of the most blatant um, occurrences of homophobia that I've experienced. Uh, I was at my very first international conference. Um, and at the time that was, I, that was kind of pretty traumatic for me because I you know, wasn't in my own country. I didn't have very much money. I kind of felt locked up in my hotel room all, all, all the time. And even at UCL, um, I, I was almost sacked in my first year of being a postdoc. Um, where I knew my sexuality was definitely one of the main reasons for um, uh, my contract being being looked at kind of in detail. Um, but thankfully, uh, an amicable arrangement uh, was was brokered and it all actually ended up being OK. Um, you, know, you know, that kind of threat was withdrawn very rapidly when they sort of realized what the implications were. I'm sure this kind of like all fed into my lack of confidence about being a scientist, uh, being an accepted member um, of a research group, being accepted into academia, um, which, you know, can be in more ways than one, an, an, an old boys club. Um, and in, in one respect, you know, sort of being a, a white cis male, I've definitely benefited from being in that old boys club. But when it came to being different in terms of sexuality, then, um, you know, the, the opposite was true. It definitely has. This has definitely affected me. But I must say here that I think it doesn't come into play with people you work and interact with directly and closely. They know you, they're aware of your skill sets. But otherwise, as a system, there is a problem. I do face unconscious demotion, which is really very frustrating. And I don't know if it is my gender or racial identity, most likely it's both of them coming together. A woman of color is not likely to be considered for a defined leadership position. We are basically left to ourselves to identify suitable roles and career progression pathways. Whenever opportunities are offered, they are delayed, this include promotions. We are also likely to be left out of informal networks and receive any informal mentoring. This is obviously what I'm saying is my personal experience and uh, there is, we should not generalize because each individual will come up with their, um, with their own experiences. I think I've managed so far to not be exposed or be subjected to some of the worst discriminations against racial and ethnic minorities overtly because you know you could sort of objectively look at my career and where i am now and say well there's no way this person who's become this professor at the age of 37 could have been exposed to to racism um and you know there but there has there has been times where through nothing more than the color of my skin people have assumed i'm not who i am and i do not have the qualification i qualifications i have now with my personality those things have not stopped me then pursuing whatever opportunity it was or you know it hasn't hounded me out of say academia more generally but the same behaviors could have a massively negative impact on somebody of a different personality type i think you know there's a number of intersections there where just you know the idea of being black that all black people are subject to the same discriminations and react to them in the same way is incorrect i think you know that there are what do they call it, intersectional axes across which you know those kind of discriminations fall and and you know what you lose by being black i.e you're the victim of race-based discrimination you may um be able to withstand that because some other bit of your life you know you might have a stable family life or you may have economic stability or you may have had brought up in a by parents who who were also black but had a lot of confidence in themselves and in you i always think that it's 
you know, it's not the people shouting names at you in the street. It's it's the decisions that are made behind closed doors when you're not there, um, which are based on the fact you're black, right? And and the person who's making that decision, which is, you know, stifling your progress, they themselves may not even realize that the decision they've made has been because they are racist or, you know, they may not even perceive that thought or the decision to be related to my race. And I've not been there to see those things, right? So there's an argument to be made that, you know, I could have progressed even further in my career more quickly if I was white. So simple facts like the good old toilet problem. Uh, I have to climb to the third floor of my office building to find a gender neutral toilet. And I'm lucky enough that I am in work in a place where we actually have a gender neutral toilet at all. Secondly, as I mentioned before, transgender people fight with a host of mental health issues, which is just compounded by lots of other things. So, for example, I, as I said, I'm very lucky that I am white and I have very supportive parents, but a lot of transgender people have trouble with their family and at home. And then there's also the other aspect of sort of trying to transition physically whilst you're working in academia, which is my experience right now. So, for example, imagine all these sort of mental anguish and bodily changes that you went through in puberty for about 10 years. Now compress that down to about three years of time and then imagine you also have to maintain a single household, look all, do all the adult things, adult quote unquote things, and try to maintain an eight hour a day job. Secondly, like most other minorities, we're also much more likely to sort of engage in EDI work. And so this is something that's not really considered in job or fellowship applications, like all the time that you spend. And I would say that together I've spent probably several months of work just on EDI issues and helping the university with EDI stuff, doing outreach work and so on. And that's months of work that I either haven't put into research or publications or anything else. So somebody else's CV after the exact same time might look a lot better, quote unquote, on paper because they have more papers published and got more research done than my CV does because I spend a lot of time doing EDI work and helping people out instead. And then thirdly, of course, there's the aspect of the fact that many countries and places are simply impossible for me to work with. So, for example, uh, you all know that LGBT in particular trans identities aren't protected in many parts of the world and in some parts actively prosecuted. So, for example, um, there is a whole list of countries I could never go to f do field work in, that I could never go to for conferences, that I could never go to and accept a job in, for example. I would say it goes beyond my identity, right, to actual systems. So, as a Black mixed heritage woman, um, absolutely, I, I did see a lot of um sexism um uh, subtle and not so subtle racism but what i will say is for a while i was just very naive about it all and so i you know i had my blinders on so i just didn't listen to any of it right and i didn't pay attention to any of it so i couldn't let it get to me because the second that I remove those blinders, it's just all so overwhelming. So not everybody wants to put those blinders on or, or, or has the ability to do that. And, and so, yeah, it absolutely affects people, right? Like my personal experience is not everybody's experience. Um, I would say if looking back, I would have handled it differently. Um, I probably would have tried to you know organize with others who were feeling um the same way disenfranchised by you know patriarchy and white supremacy and all of that I, I i would absolutely have done that and tried to tackle those issues at that time rather than keeping my head down and and moving forward but i also will say that there's no shame in doing that because you know you've got to do what you got to do to survive as well um, especially in my career, there are times where, you know, right now it's difficult to tell sometimes if I'm being approached because I'm an expert in something or, or you know, I'm, I'm knowledgeable in something or I have good takes and thoughts on certain issues or is it just because I'm a Black woman um, and that's, you know, trendy. Um, I don't know, but uh, 
if you know I've made the decision that as true as that might be, um, that it might still help, you know, as long as I'm aware of the systems that we're in and what I might be contributing to the problem by doing 